everyone. Um, welcome to the ePortfolio Showcase. Uh, my name is Marwa Answar. I am an ePortfolio Consultant. Um, I'm one, I was the one who coordinated this event, and I'm very excited for everyone to see our four wonderful presenters who will be showcasing the ePortfolio today. Uh, now, I would like you to introduce um, you to uh, our program director, Pablo Abela, for a few words. Pablo? Thank you, Marwa. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual LaGuardia. If you're joining us from outside LaGuardia, welcome. Uh, and thank you for being here and for taking the time to um, uh, see the exemplary work that our students have done uh, during this very difficult time and semester, to say the least. Uh, we're very happy that you were able to make it. We have four outstanding students who will be uh, presenting their e-portfolios and speaking about the assignments they have put on them and their learning experiences in them. We are recording this session so that we can share the recording afterwards for those who were unavailable to attend. We have 50 people on the call. We're very excited about it. And we're also going live on Facebook. So um, towards the end of our session, there will be time for the audience to ask uh, questions. So let me uh, take you through uh, what's going to happen in this, in this session. First of all, I want to thank the ePortfolio team at LaGuardia Community College. You can see them right there on your screen from left to right, myself right there, and then uh, the rest of my team, Marwa, Jeannie, Fifi, Mutaz, and Thomas, and Derek. Um, I wanna give a shout out, especially to Marwa and Thomas who have coordinated the event today and, and have prepared the students for them to be ready and share their work with you. Um, let me just. This event uh, will feature LaGuardia students from four different disciplines. Uh, you can see a glimpse of their portfolios right there on your screen. And the interesting thing will be that the diversity of disciplines will really speak about the ePortfolio practice at LaGuardia. At LaGuardia, there is this core ePortfolio that follows the students from beginning to end. They start in the first year seminar and they take that portfolio through their program and discipline-based courses all the way until they get to a capstone uh, level course where they, by then, they have built a robust and strong and visually powerful portfolio. You're going to see four examples of that and you will be able to see the exemplary work that our students uh, have done. Uh, before I get into a few more uh, logistics, I want to, if you are a LaGuardia student or a faculty member, I wanted to make sure um, I wanted to make sure that I share a few resources. Uh, if you're a student who uh, needs some support in building your ePortfolio, you can always attend one of the virtual ePortfolio workshops. And I'm posting this on the uh, chat so that you are able to access the links that are referenced on your screen. Uh, students who are required to deposit assessment. They, uh, they also can access resources and training materials so that you are able to get that help. And the full list of tutorials, whether you need help with anything in building your portfolio is also available via the website. The links that you're seeing on your screen are links that you are seeing that you will be able to access via the chat feature, okay? Um, as we move along, I want to uh, welcome Dean Hoffman from uh, Academic Affairs and also the director of the CTL for some welcome remarks. Dean Hoffman. Uh, great. Uh, thank you, Pablo. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for this showcase. We had a, a faculty showcase um, on Tuesday. And um, it's, it's great to see the student work there. But it's even more fun, no offense, faculty, to hear from our students as they kind of narrate their own sort of learning um, journey with ePortfolio. Um, just echoing what Pablo said, I, I definitely want to thank the ePortfolio team and Marwa and Thomas especially for this event. Um, I want to thank the faculty who are here and who have been guiding your own students learning with portfolio um, in, in your courses, in your programs. Um, I think that the ePortfolio practice and ePortfolio learning um, at LaGuardia is one of the signatures of um, our institution and none of it would be possible without the, not only the input, but the, the leadership and direction from our faculty. So thank you all and thank you for being here. Um, and then I just wanna thank the students who are presenting. Uh, I, as I said, I, I love seeing the work that you're doing and we know that 
moving from the portfolio as a tool to help guide and shape your own learning to a portfolio that you're going to show and use to represent your learning to an outside audience uh, is a pretty big deal in, in my boat. And um, I, uh, I think that, you know, it's finding the time also as while you're a student and during these difficult times of online learning um, makes it even extra special. So thank you. And thank you to our, uh, our outside guests and our partners from Digication um, for joining us here as well. So back to you, Pablo. Thank you, Dean Hoffman. And uh, I want to reiterate those thanks to uh, colleagues from outside uh, LaGuardia from other CUNY colleges and, and colleagues from Digication as well. Uh, without their support, we, we wouldn't have been able to do all of this work. I want to um, take you to the next uh, piece, which, was, which will be a bit of logistics. Uh, again, we are uh, going live on Facebook right now uh, and the ePortfolio team is monitoring uh, any comments or questions that will come to presenters uh, uh, that we will have during our time of discussion. Um, you are invited to use the chat feature in this call so that you're able to, as you hear each presentation, if you have comments, if you have questions for the presenters, please use the chat feature and uh, our ePortfolio team will be monitoring that and we will be raising those questions uh, towards the end. It's time to uh, uh, introduce our presenters. From left to right, you see uh, Daria fedorova mux -Bina, uh, a physical therapy assistant student. She is going to present the portfolio that she's done as part of her um, studies in that program. We're going to hear them from Victoria Luang, who's a biology major, uh, and all of the work that she's done in that program. And then you have Jane de la Cruz Acosta, who will be uh, uh, presenting her portfolio. She is a childhood education major at LaGuardia. And then finally from left uh, on the right side, you see Sarah Delf, who is a therapeutic recreation uh, student and who will be presenting the work that she has done in her program. Uh, we will begin first with Jane, uh, then we will have Daria, Sarah, and finally Victoria. Uh, once again, all of our audi uh, the audience is invited to use the chat feature so that you can uh, post questions or comments uh, and then the ePortfolio team will bring those up during our discussion time with the presenters. So without further ado, I'm going to now hand it over to uh, Jane. Hi everybody, um, my name is Jane De La Cruz and today I will be showing you my ePortfolio and how I utilize and personalize my portfolio so far in my college career. Um, this first page is my About Me page and I'm just gonna talk about what I wrote. So this is my first semester in LaGuardia as an early childhood education ma major. However, this is not my first time in college. I actually started in uh, 2009. Jane, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, do you mind sharing your screen? I think that part. Oh, will be I'm for that. So sorry. Hold don't, on. Don't worry. Don't worry. If you can just share your screen while you do that, I'll remind our audience mm -hmm. to use the chat feature on the call. Um, Jane, you should be able to see the green share button at the bottom. There you okay. go. Okay. I'm so now sorry about it. that. Fantastic. Not at all. Keep going. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm just going to start. This is my about me page. And I just talked about um, just more about myself. And so what I said earlier is that I'm a first, uh, this is my first semester in LaGuardia. However, this is not my first time in college. I actually started in 2009 uh, as a history major, but uh, I took a hiatus in 2015 to just focus on um, being a full-time teacher at a Head Start program um, with children from infants to kindergarten prep. And my whole time there, I realized that being in the classroom and learning and having fun with the children was made way more fun than talking about history uh, or anything related. So uh, this year I decided to pursue becoming a preschool teacher so that and return to school so that I can focus and know more about the field, uh, learning about uh, old and new practices and approaches that I can use and utilize for my career. Um, so, in this section here, I have my hobbies and interests. I wrote a few and one of them is journal writing. I love being able to document my experiences, my feelings and my um, any moments that I wanted to keep sake. So learning that um, in, my, uh, in my new major, uh, 
that I was able that I can use a digital platform to journal my experience in college. So I'm really happy and very excited to use um, the ePortfolio. And one of the first page that I wanted to show you is my career and assessment exploration page. I particularly love this page because it's very um, insightful and personal to me. And here, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is my first semester as an early child education major. So uh, this is my So here we have to do to take two personal personality uh, two assessment one for personality type test and another one for a career match test, and um, one of the one of the results in my personality type is that um, I'm very passionate and I have strong convictions and things that I care and interested about, and that was very insightful to me because. Um, being an education major definitely is becoming more of passion, uh, a passion and something I want to keep pursuing. And I'm very glad that that's what it, that's the result that I got. And then, um, and I absolutely love that being able to take a personality type to learn more about myself that I may not have known and just for like self growth. And I love that it was part of a assignment and then be able to share it somewhere um, in my e-portfolio. And then at the bottom here is basically um, different uh, careers that I can potentially succeed at if I put effort and time in. And one of the first match is actually an early child educator, which is what I'm pursuing. So I find that very uh, exciting and I'm very happy to find that um, that's my top match because I'm definitely um, it's definitely synchronistic and uh, confirmation for me that I am in the right path of where I'm going. And also I can use my career, uh, my e-portfolio to look back on one day that if in case uh, teaching is not something I want to keep pursuing later on, I can always look back and see other careers I can do or even just uh, climb up into the education field, maybe as an education administrator here because uh, I think I can see, I can definitely see myself later on after my master's degree um, to become and lead other teachers um, and train them. Um, my other page that I wanted to show was my time management page. And here the objective is uh, we have to track and we have to track how we utilize our time um, during the week. And we had to complete an Excel document and here we have to just uh, track where we put our time and attention most. And doing this made me realize that, um, of course, my first obligation is with my family and then followed by uh, going to school and also going to work takes a chunk out of my time. And I have to, and being able to see this, I can really reflect and do better at how I can just focus and divide my time on whatever um, activities that I have in my day. And um, I love that I'm able to reflect on it after right here um, so that I can, um, like I said earlier, to do better uh, how I use my time, especially now that I have so many responsibilities going on. And I got to compare and contrast how, uh, how much I've improved from when I was um, a history major to now. And the second page I wanted to share is my um, um, the how I became an educator. This is one of my most recent pages that I completed. Uh, it's for uh, another class. And here is basically like a comic strip uh, that tells our story of how uh, our uh, prior academic experiences and personal experiences on what influenced us to want to become teachers. So, um, and I love that um, I'm able to record it and document and just to look back on like, and if ever I forget what the purpose of my philosophy is of becoming a teacher. And I think it's important that um, that we can, it's important for teachers to always self-reflect um, so that we can become better teachers for um, our students. 
and even improve our how we approach and interact with them. And at the bottom here, we talked about where we are now in our present time and what we're doing to become certified teachers. And so in conclusion, um, other than the designing aspect of building my portfolio, what was most meaningful to me um, is the documenting and the reflecting of my academic journey, as well as recording my personal and professional growth as I get my degree. And after a five year hiatus from school, I really wanted to approach my second experience in college uh, differently and with better intentions. And I think as, um, and having that digital uh, e-portfolio, I'm able to access my past lessons and experiences so that I can utilize them later on or whenever I need to go back to it. And I'm definitely going to be using my e-portfolio when I apply for a new job in the education field. I think it'll be a great way to show how I was a student and as an, a current educator also, and to show and uh, to show my skills and abilities with using digital platforms, since especially with our time now that we're in integrating digital technologies in our education. Um, institutions and one of the things that I constantly remind myself as I add a new page in my portfolio to remain genuine and true in my reflections because aside from enjoying the journal writing hub as a hobby I want my potential employers to see um, how I how passionate I am becoming a strong and effective teacher for our future generations and I just want to say thank you for listening and viewing my portfolio. Thank you so much, Jane. This really is, I'm just reading some comments uh, from the chat. Uh, congrats, Jane. This is a beautiful portfolio. Thank Love you. it from Jeff. Uh, Helen uh, Chen says, it's great to see how these reflections could also potentially inform your personal statement and application for graduate schools as well. Mm -hmm. Well done. Uh, Karen says, Jane, your page, how I become an educator. It's a great way to dissect how you how you go to this place, how you got to this place you're in. Such nice work. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you Jane. Well done. Such a lovely presentation. Thank Fantastic. you so much. Thank you, Jane. This really is uh, an outstanding portfolio from an education perspective. Um, mm -hmm. I want to encourage our uh, audience to keep uh, posting your questions and comments on uh, the chat. Uh, we're going to move, uh, we're going to shift gears now and uh, hand it over to Daria. And then if you have questions, even for Jane, post them on the chat and we will uh, come back to them. Uh, so thank you once again, Jane. Uh, and now I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Daria. Hello, everyone. Um, can I share already my uh, my portfolio? Like, can you yes. share my screen? Yeah, yes, can. you can go ahead okay. and hit the green share mm -hmm. button. Yep. And Okay, doing it. Go right ahead. Uh, so, uh, one more time. Hello, everybody. My name is Daria Fyodorov Moskvina, and as a majority of students, I used to hate e portfolio. So, I find the fact that I'm participating in this showcase uh, quite interesting and very ironic. But let me tell about myself first and slowly demonstrate the change in my love hate relationship with e portfolio. So as a student uh, of, I'm a student of uh, physical therapy assistant program, and uh, this is my last semester. In my non-student life, I used to be a martial arts and touch instructor, and absolute majority of my students actually had and uh, have pre-existing body conditions, which is in combination with intense sports activities, are more likely to promote disease rather than health. Even then we talk about Taichi. So I realized quite soon that I need to learn more about the human body, its physiology, mechanics, and the corrective exercises. And physical therapy was the perfect choice. So now I'm uh, about a month away from graduation exam. And uh, because of the effort of the PTA program faculty, which is truly amazing, I have to say that at this point, I know probably as much as I could. But of course, it is still very far away from knowing enough 
uh, to feel comfortable in my new profession. And I believe that it's probably normal uh, because amount of medical knowledge and skills and experience we need to have uh, to gain a real professional confidence is actually incredible. And a couple years of school never will be enough. So there is a decent amount of areas in which I would love to expand my knowledge and gain more skills. But uh, because of the PTA faculty and the program, I have solid foundation and I have a good continuous education plan. Probably I would say that our faculty is amazing uh, many times, but I truly feel so. And because everything in our program is very well thought, even the use of ePortfolio. Um, of course, ePortfolio is a quite good tool uh, by itself, but it was our faculty who helped me to break my inner resistance uh, to use it and understand that is, it is a convenient tool. And let me illustrate it. As uh, a PTA student, I used ePortfolio for many projects, uh, but the most memorable and impactful was the Capstone project, a very complex one, which we were working on during three semesters and which consists of three parts. So uh, one part, one semester. In my case, projects, uh, project all together contains more than 20 different files and documents. So the ePortfolio with its already preset structure, ample storing space, uh, easy access from anywhere, and even the opportunity to uh, compare my uh, work with the projects of my classmates was actually uh, very helpful. And the project was dedicated to one pathology which we really studied in details. And the first part, which I'm right now going through, uh, contains general introduction to the pathology. And the second part is uh, about clinical distinction, my pathology from um, some other one. And the third part was dedicated to the medical treatment. Uh, so this project is actually a great example of very a uh, nice project organization and use of ePortfolio uh, because the project was following our knowledge and the abilities to comprehend things. And uh, it finally summarized everything we learned and all skills uh, gained to one united holistic thing. So um, I'm not going far away in this project because it is really huge. And instead, I actually would love to talk about the other project. Um, and this also illustrates how uh, thoughtful and very up-to-date uh, PTA faculty is regarding school assignments. And uh, as all LaGuardia students, my cohort had to study during the spring semester online. And besides the school, pandemic affected uh, physical therapy clinics and our clinical rotation. So even though uh, physical therapy is seen as essential business and clinics opened uh, quite fast, many patients were afraid to go to the clinics. So many uh, PT sites tried telehealth as a physical therapy option. And uh, in this project, we indeed were asked to perform a telehealth session. You kind of can see here me and my classmate while we were trying to do so. Uh, and it actually was very challenging assignment because telehealth uh, physical therapy session is very dependent on the physical therapy professional. Uh, and I have to say that if uh, at any given point in reality, I will have to prepare a session uh, by myself in the future, I most definitely will check this portfolio page to just review the potential issues. And lastly, I want to demonstrate how I used ePortfolio when I was applying for a job. Um, I actually, uh, besides the written, already written resume, which my ePortfolio contains, uh, it also has information about my professional and community engagement. And in this uh, part of ePortfolio, I use the information that I not always include in my resume and prone to toss a lot uh, according to requests from potential employer. 
but at this time I used it. Uh, and I was an API tutor for human anatomy and physiology in LaGuardia for three semesters. And it maybe was a side job, but I put it in because I wanted to demonstrate that I have a decent knowledge in this area. And um, because the tutoring allowed me to gain very important experience uh, teaching. And uh, actually, it's really essential skills for physical therapy because the patient education is a big part of our work. So the fact that ePortfolio stores all this kind of information uh, is very convenient uh, for the use when I'm writing or rewriting my resume. So to summarize everything said, uh, you probably learned three things. The first, that I really love my uh, faculty. And second, that I don't really have hate uh, ePortfolio e anymore. And the third, that I eventually uh, found it quite convenient too. And I actually used it already for a few times outside of my school life. So thank you very much for the attention. And if you have a questions, I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daria. It's great to hear. First of all, it's great to hear how much you have uh, documented in your portfolio. I was just uh, put in some comments for our outside LaGuardia guests. The API stands for Academic Peer Instruction, and it's a form of mentoring that LaGuardia um, establishes where students get help from former students on a specific courses. Uh, let me read one, one comment from Professor May Tom. Well done, Daria. It is great uh, to see how you used your ePortfolio for academic growth and professional co career. Congratulations, that's great. Professor, uh, Prof Professor Oliver Stankovic, wonderful presentation. Jane also, I like that you personalize your academic journey. Nice job, Daria, absolutely. Um, both Jane and Daria have given us great examples of how portfolios are used in two very different uh, disciplines. Um, Kelly uh, Driscoll from Digication, Daria, I am so happy to hear you have such a strong relationship with your um, faculty and they were able to help you through your initial resistance to the ePortfolio and that it has become such an asset for you. Absolutely, we second that. Uh, Professor Tanika Barrow, very nice award, Daria. That's great. Thank you so much. I want to check with my uh, colleagues on the ePortfolio team unless there's questions or comments from uh, Facebook. Um, Jasmine Edwards, professor from Therapeutic Recreation. Thank you, Daria, for sharing your ePortfolio. You have done some wonderful work. Uh, once again, thank you, uh, thank you, Daria, for uh, that nice presentation. I'm going to switch gears and we're going to uh, make a small change. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Victoria, who will present, and then we will have uh, Sarah at the end of our presentation. So thank you again, Daria. Uh, please uh, keep the comments going on the chat. Um, let me read one more. Helen Chen, your videos on the PT sessions you designed as well as your class presentation clearly demonstrate evidence of communication skills, as well as your ability to navigate and use the technology effectively. Great job, Daria, absolutely. Uh, I too was resistant to the ePortfolio process. Thank you, Sharad Craig says on the chat. Thank you, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, I, we're gonna move ahead and I'm gonna hand it over now to Victoria who will now present uh, to us her ePortfolio from biology, Victoria. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm going to share my. Absolutely. Okay. Can everyone see it? Yes, we can. Perfect. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Victoria and my major is biology. I'm currently in my third semester at LaGuardia and I'm expected to graduate in spring 2021. In my second semester at LaGuardia, I took first year seminar for natural science with Professor uh, Radhak Krishnan, which is when I created my ePortfolio. For my page, I wanted a visually appealing homepage, so I chose calmer images such as marbling and lighter abstract art. I pulled a lot of these images from a website called unsplash.com. My about me is on the right and my professional photo is on the left. I chose a somewhat professional image because if I do end up sending this page to my employers or my professor. Um, this is most likely their first time seeing me, so I want to have my um, the best first impression. So below my photo, I added my major and my hobbies and interests. Um, below that is my favorite quote. 
It's a quote from one of my favorite books called The Tao of Wu, which is um, by the RZA. Uh, the quote is, if you live through defeat, you're not defeated. If you are beaten but acquire wisdom, you have won. Lose yourself to improve yourself. Only when we shed all self-definition do we find who we really are. Um, I really like this quote because it's a reminder that even when you fail, as long as you are learning something in the process, you haven't really failed. And after my quote is a section called my STEM identity. And I took these photos uh, pre-COVID. So this was back in um, biology 201. And these are a couple of photos on mitosis and some of the experimental setups that we had in class. And this um, on the right here is from my biology lab class before COVID. Um, just a couple of images under the microscope of fungi and um, I think I believe they're both fungi <laughs> and one um, seedless plant. So being able to organize your thoughts is such a powerful way to really hone in on your interests and really think about where you want to be in the next two to five or 10 years. I really got to understand myself a bit more when I completed the career assessment section in planning for success. Um, let me pull that up for you. So in my career assessment, we had to complete a personality test called the MBTI or Meyer-Briggs personality test. What the MBTI test essentially measures is how people perceive the world and make decisions. Uh, from the results of the test, uh, you're categorized into one of 16 personalities. My result was INFJ, which I believe is the same one as James, and that stands for the advocate. I won't go into much uh, details about the meaning, but if you want to learn more, you can always take the assessment on uh, 16personalities.com. Uh, so after we took the assessment, uh, we had to write a reflection on uh, what we thought and if we agreed with it, what our strengths and weaknesses were, and um, just kind of reflecting on our results. So for the most part, I do agree with the results, but I'm also cautious when considering their meaning because I don't feel like it applies to everyone. I feel like personalities um, are extremely complex and to place everyone to 16 personalities doesn't really seem valid, but nonetheless, it really put my uh, personality into perspective and helped me determine what my strengths and weaknesses were and how to improve my weaknesses. So followed by the MBTI test is the career exploration page. Um, I thought this section was so important and viable and it really determined where my path is right now, um, which I will discuss in a bit. So um, at the time I was interested in forensic science and I want to work in that industry. So I chose forensic pathologist, um, I chose a forensic nurse, and the last one, which is a bit random, is a biomedical scientist. I knew I want to work with microorganisms, uh, particularly very small. So while my um, specific interest right now does not fall with forensic science, um, it does branch off of biomedical science. So currently I'm studying um, what I aspire to be in uh, biotechnology. So that is uh, part of biomedical science. I kept these careers the same because I wanted to show that even though I'm not pursuing these uh, careers anymore, the growth is exponential. Um, and it really does help me put, put into perspective where my mindset was back then versus where it is now. So first year seminar was a fantastic way to understand myself, but we also focused on larger environmental issues as well, such as climate change and global warming. So for my research paper, we had to choose a topic that focused on the global implications of climate change. We had to choose a specific location and relate the global implications to that specific location by comparing the air quality index. So let me show you that assignment. So for my research paper, um, I chose Hanoi, Vietnam, um, because this is where my family's from. Uh, my topic is how the meat industry has affected uh, the geography in Hanoi, Vietnam. Um, animal agriculture contributes an enormous amount of greenhouse gases into our atmosphere, which is why I want to touch on this top topic and discuss the effects of these greenhouse gases on the geography of Vietnam. So for my research paper, we were given a set of pre-recorded data to turn into graphs. By doing so, we were able to compare data through the years. 
So here are my graphs. Uh, you can see that there's been a gradual increase in global land ocean temperature. Um, the second graph is more of a, an extensive overview of the average temperature required uh, by a decade from the 1880s to 2009. As you can see, there's an increase in overall global temperature. Um, and there have been studies that show that increases in global temperatures has had a direct correlation to rising sea levels, uh, changes in the frequency and intensity of storms, and even contribute to illnesses and vector-borne diseases. So another fantastic um, and personal assignment that we had to complete for first year seminar was our digital story. This was an oral presentation assignment that um, tested our integrative and global learning. We had to write a script and record it ourselves. The software that I personally used was um, iMovie, which is free on MacBook. Um, we had to draft a script, as you can see um, in the section above my, my video. This is my, my script. And then we had to answer a series of questions and then turn that into a video itself. And the questions were such as um, why we decided to pursue biology, what we learned from first year, uh, first year seminar, and so on. Um, for the sake of time, I will not be playing my digital story. It's a little bit hefty. It's about five minutes in total. But um, after the, um, the showcase, feel free to visit my page and um, visit and watch my video. It is very in-depth. <laughs> so Another class that I actually used iMovie for was my Fundamentals of Biotechniques course, where I had to write a poem on a biotechnique that we learned in class and present it as a digital story. So let me show you that page. So I wrote my poem on polymerase chain reaction, which is also called uh, PCR. It's the lab technique used to amplify a small amount of DNA. This is also the technique that they use when they test you for coronavirus. Um, I used iMovie for the recording itself and the background with the stickers was customized. I know it's coming out fairly slowly, but you can see it's a bit of a gridded and there's a sticker right here, um, but this is all customized on um, a website called Canva. For the sake of time, I will not be playing my digital story, but feel free to visit my page after the showcase and watch my video. So lastly is my resume and CV. Um, depending on your industry, your resume will look a bit different. I chose a resume template that would have a bit more emphasis on research because that's what I want to do in biotechnology. I used a research template from Canva and my CV is from Zeti. Um, essentially, the major difference between a resume and a CV is a CV is a bit longer and has more information such as certifications and publications. Um, as, I, as I'm now, I don't have any publications, but when I do publish an academic article, um, I would be adding that onto my CV and not my resume. So here's a bit of my work history. It, it, the CV does look very similar to a resume, but there are sections that are not included in a resume and they do express to make your resume one page while CV can extend up to three, maybe four, depending on how extensive your um, research and your uh, career goes. So here you have it. So overall, um, I think ePortfolio is a fantastic tool to impress your professors and future employers. I think it's worth it to take the time to figure out the layout of your page because in the end, you can use it as a resource to showcase your academic potential and creativity. Um, but feel free to take a look at my page for inspiration and thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Victoria. This was fantastic. Let me read some comments from, from the chat. Uh, Professor Preeti uh, says, Victoria, you've always been an incredibly articulate and deeply thoughtful student. I'm so thrilled to see your ePortfolio grow and strengthen your FYS. Love your signature assignments and your careful reflections and the growth of your learning over time. All the best in your future. Uh, so proud of you. Uh, Professor Sara Jaman from Business. Uh, thank you, Victoria, for sharing such a great piece of work. It shows your effort. Just a question. Um, did you have audience in mind while creating your ePortfolio? Wish I could invite you 
to my first year seminar course. Your presentation was very thoughtful and inspiring. Victoria, any quick uh, answer to, to that question? Did you have audience in mind while creating your ePortfolio? Um, that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, my audience was mostly my professors. <laughs> and I also did have the intention of sending this to my employer in the future. Um, I think it's such a great tool and a, you know, a fantastic resource for any professor or any employer to really understand who you are and your you know, academic potential. So that was what I had in mind. Thank you. And uh, I, I put in the comments as well, the first year seminar template at LaGuardia, it's a comprehensive template that has activities around transfer, advisement, uh, career, and Victoria and the other students have shown how those portfolios have, have helped them understand themselves much better. So the audience is also uh, the student uh, himself, herself, and that helps the student uh, develop an understanding of the discipline. Uh, let me read a couple of more comments. Uh, uh, Kelly Driscoll from the Education, can't wait to watch those videos. Uh, Victoria, you're an excellent communicator and your e-portfolio is beautiful and the work is very express, uh, impressive. I put the comment, all of the portfolios will be available on the, on the website soon. Let me read one more comment. Uh, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll shift gears. Uh, James Stahl, you might wanna consider combining your field with public relations or communication studies. You could be a biology TV star. Your public speaking skills, your verbal skills are impressive. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you so much. Keep the comments going on the chat. Uh, we're gonna shift gears now to um, our next presenter. Thank you again, Victoria, for presenting your e-portfolio. Uh, I'm gonna uh, now hand it over to uh, Sarah, who uh, will present her e-portfolio to us. Sarah? Thank you, Pablo. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Go right ahead. So my name is Sarah. My major is actually therapeutic recreation. And as you can tell by the picture, I was in the military. That was the very first thing that I have ever done in my life. Um, so outside the military, once I got out, I decided, you know, that wasn't my career or where I wanted to be for the rest of my life. So I applied to LaGuardia and I got accepted. And I applied with the, in my mind, I wanted to graduate as an LPN. But unfortunately, I wasn't, you know, accepted into the program, but that's all right. And then after talking to a couple of people, a couple of advisors, I got um, introduced to the therapeutic recreation program which I am very, very, very thankful for because it actually fits me more than what it would have been as an LPN. It's more so my personality. It is a, just a lot better. Um, one of my quotes that I really, really liked was by Dave Austin. And the part that really touched me was, I think what is important is that we have the opportunity to touch the lives of others and make a difference in their lives, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I want to help people. I want to make sure their quality of life is better and everything else. And as I continue down, um, as a recreational therapist, we do have some advantages that other professions don't, which is we provide leisure and fun that is fit for each client specifically. And so that's something that makes us different throughout that. And I also added my goals. So one of my short-term goals is to obviously I'm going to Lehman. I've already been accepted to achieve a bachelor's. Um, I also want to work with the geriatrics population seniors. And a long-term goal, I always want to be an advocate for the TR profession because a lot of you who are watching this probably is like, what is a TR? What is the profession? What do we do? Well, that's why I have my page. You can come to visit whenever you like and um, learn more about it. And a big thing is to be a part of the Nystra meetings. Um, you want to network, you know, know who's out there, you know, you could run into someone who is really, really big and you're like, oh, I can work with you. And then, you know, it's connections, networking. And so on top of that, I want to present my first page, which was part of my 100 course, which was the Leisure Philosophy Project. So on this assignment, what we had to do was discuss what your first personal leisure experience was. And so what I, like a personal leisure could be shopping, it could be video games, reading a book, whatever you find leisure, whatever brings you a sense of peace away from the stress of life. So what I experienced myself was, my first leisure was learning to ride a bike. 
And so after I learned to ride my bike, what I wrote was riding through the sun, wind in my hair, my feet pedaling as fast as they can go, mixed with a bunch of laughter is how many weekends and after school days went. So that's kind of like was my stress free, get away from everything. That was my fun. That was my leisure. Um, this assignment actually taught me what like I never knew riding a bike having fun was leisure. You know, you don't really think of it as a leisure. It's a good way to get away from stress. And um, this helps you in your future. So when you um, when you like interview a person and what is their leisure, they're like, I don't have anything. Well, what do you like? Do you like to ride a bike? They don't look at it as leisure. So this is a great way to understand what it was and how it can be used for future references. Um, the next assignment I had was part of my 102. It was called the what's in your bag. So also like Victoria mentioned is for time's sake, uh, we, the videos is really, is pretty long. So this assignment, I will explain what it was and the purpose and what I liked about it. So it's called what's in your bag. And what we had to do was get a bag, create the outside of how others view you. And then on the inside, you would put things of what represents how you view yourself. And so on the outside, I remember I put, um, I put like a big heart. So the heart represents I was very caring. And I also put, um, what was it? I put a light bulb because, you know, I'm very creative, basically thoughtful, have great ideas, bright ideas. And on the inside, I put a blank journal and the journal represents, it was blank, nothing in it. It was represents I'm open-minded to anything, to learn new things. And I also put a lollipop inside because it shows I'm just a sweet person. I'm just like very sweet. I like to help everyone. I wanna make everyone happy. So I'm just that sweet, sweet person. Um, this helped me a lot because it taught me the qualities that I didn't know I had that I could bring into my future job employment. Um, also, it brings you the qualities that you need to improve. Like maybe you talk too much or maybe you're too shy. You need to bring that out. You need to learn to deal with those qualities also. It's not just the good, it's the bad also. And then the third assignment I want to show was part of my 200 class. And it was my weekly activity calendar. And part of this assignment was we would come up with a facility and you would make in weekly um, calendar, basically different activities of what your residents, your clients can um, participate in. So for me, what I did was I made up the Helping Hands Nursing Facility. It's mainly for seniors who have Alzheimer's. And so each game is fit to like help them, you know, with their memory, things to improve their quality of life. And um, what I put at the bottom was the lounge, like the stars represent is the key the different rooms, where it's gonna be held and whatnot, and then the different types of activities. And so this is very important because when you get to your employment, you know, they're gonna expect you, oh, how are the residents gonna know where to go? How do they know what's going on for the week? Do you know how to create one? So this was part of a really like detailed, and I made it Halloween theme because it was during, you know, October. And so after that, we have my resume. And so the resume is also attached, which is a good thing. Um, it has the summary of who I am, the skills I have learned throughout my whole career, um, my experiences, and then last but not least, the education, of course, and then the awards and acknowledgements is also attached to there. So I, me as a student in my graduating year, a portfolio has definitely, definitely taught me a lot. Um, I will definitely use this for future reference for um, future employments, future employers. Not only is your resume attached, but when they ask you, oh, what did you actually learn? You have proof, you could show them in writing, you can show them the assignments of what um, you have done. And also from starting from first year seminar on, it definitely grew through ePortfolio. And it, even if I transfer on and those colleges don't use ePortfolio, I still plan to add those classes into my ePortfolio to for future employment. Cause it is gonna be a great employment tool cause they can actually see it's digital. It's not just word of mouth. They can actually have something to go along with it. 
And I just want to thank everyone for coming out and listening to, to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah. It was fantastic to see all of uh, all of your work and congratulations uh, on, on moving ahead after LaGuardia. Let me let me just read a couple of comments um, so that I don't lose track. And then uh, my colleague Thomas is going to read. Uh, is going to ask a couple of questions that came up in the chat. Uh, Professor Jasmine Edwards says, Sarah, it has been a pleasure having you as a student and watching you grow as a student and as a future therapeutic recreation professional. Wonderful work. Uh, Professor Oliver Stankovic, great job, Sarah. You're very confident, creative, and empathetic. You are passionate and caring indeed. Uh, Kelly Driscoll from Digication, congratulations on your acceptance to Lehman. You have uh, inspiring career and personal goals. The world needs more people like you, absolutely, especially now. Uh, Professor May Tom, congratulations, Sarah. Very impressive on how your ePortfolio represents you. I think that's a key, that's, that's a theme we've seen across all presentations. There are so many comments. Let me just read a couple more. Uh, uh, Fifi from the ePortfolio team, you all have been amazing, excellent presentations. Um, uh, Professor Michelle de Gouges Malone from Education. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing your ePortfolio, Sarah. You're quite impressive. Uh, let me turn it over to my colleague and thank you again, Sarah. It was fantastic to see your work. Um, I want to ask my colleague uh, Thomas from the ePortfolio team because he has a couple of questions. Thomas? Hey, hi everybody. Uh, this is Thomas Respigliosi from the ePortfolio Consultants, um, the ePortfolio Project Manager. And again, I just want to thank everybody for taking part in this presentation. I think all of the presentations were wonderful. Um, and I'm going to be handling the Q&A section for today's presentation. And our first question is coming from um, Professor Helen Chen. And this question is for Victoria. Um, given your career pivot to biology, are there skills or abilities that transfer from hospitality management to your new area of study direction? That's a fantastic question. I have a response right away. Um, communication, which is uh, essentially very, very important when you're in research and development. You have to be able to communicate your findings and your experiments. Um, and also to your peers as well when you're doing research. It's very vital. So communication is one of them. And also teamwork, which is a very big one. Normally, when you work in a, a lab, you're on a very small team, maybe four or five, sometimes a little bit larger. But for the most part, it doesn't exceed 10. So, you know, teamwork is fantastic as well. Communication falls into that bucket as well. Um, but I think those are the two key takeaways I have um, taken from my hospitality background into research and development. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have another question from uh, Karen Gonzalez. Uh, this is, question is for uh, Daria. Uh, now that you are close to graduation, what takeaways, um, I'm not sure what, what you wrote here. Um, now that you're close to graduation, what takeaways come from documenting the practice assessment you did with your classmates and how might this help uh, help you with post graduation? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, first, I believe uh, that everything that we put into e portfolio, it's something, again, it's our path, it's our thoughts, it's our discoveries, our knowledge, and sometimes our skills. So. Um, I can say that I already, like I didn't graduate yet, but some information that uh, I put and some skills that I used to create some projects in the ePortfolio I already used, for example, in the uh, rehabilitation center of one of the probably best New York hospitals. I really, actually I used the project, the capsule project that I was talking about and I was preparing in service. And uh, literally everything that I had to do, it's a little bit reorganized information to the format that the uh, medical team really wanted to see it and was able to present with quite a great depth because I was working on that over like more than a year on this topic. Nice. So. Um, so this next question is for Jane. Uh, what is one thing you've learned about yourself as a student after building your ePortfolio? Hi. Uh, so one of the things that I learned about myself is how um, how serious I am with making sure that my work is always professional, but also very per uh, personal also so that it's meaningful to me and just so that I can put myself in my schoolwork and be able to show that with everybody, even for potential um, employers and whatnot, even for professors, too. 
Um, and Sarah, this question is for you. Um, what would you tell students who are just starting to build their e-portfolios and what values can you highlight? If you're, sorry, thank you for the question. If you're sure. just now starting your e-portfolio, I would say, don't look at it as, why am I doing this? I have all this work. Like, what is this? why is it on top of everything else? <laughs> it helps you. It helps you in the long run. It's gonna help you when you get to your graduating year, which is what I'm in. I'm very appreciative of it because not like I said, not only is it just your resume, you can send them the digital work, what you've learned, what you've done. And um, what was the second part, the highlight? Yeah, what would you highlight? Highlight, um, be creative, make it your own. Um, don't just step out of the, step out of your box and just make it your own thing. I, whatever pictures represents you, what goes along with your career, you wanna bring that attention from employers like, wow, this person's really creative. Like I could have them as a feature, you know, employer. And that's about it. Okay. And I guess we can, we can kind of ask that, that question for everyone else too. Like, uh, what would you, for the rest of our presenters, what, what are um, some things you would tell students who are first uh, starting to create their portfolio? Because I know that a couple of things that came up that there are some students who are resistant about building a portfolio, but what could you tell those students who are being a little bit resistant about building a portfolio? And any one of you can answer, anyone can take that. I can go first. Sure. Um, be patient. <laughs> It, it's a process. Uh, it's a lot of exploring, a lot of um, kind of playing around with the website. Um, it kind of feels like a little bit of coding sometimes, but it's not not really. But it does. You have to go in depth. You have to be patient. You have to explore. You have to see what you like, what you don't like. You know, looking at examples of all the previous um, presenters and their showcase portfolios um, really does help draw inspiration. That's where I drew my inspiration when I first started my e-portfolio as well. Anyone else? I probably would say that try to, when you go with your portfolio, uh, do everything not in a way that you do that for professors, but that you really do that for yourself as useful as you can. Very nice. Very nice. Um, okay. I, I wanted to share that, um, make it your own, really take advantage of the resources that they have on the ePortfolio website, because that will help you really personalize and add uh, stuff and images that you want that's, you know, that's personalized for you. And you'll be able to share who you are in these pages. Nice, very nice. Um, we do have a question. Oh, um, this is Professor uh, Stankanovich. Um, they actually would like to see all of you uh, to be able to go through and present your portfolios or actually share your portfolios and links to your portfolios. Uh, we will have the students' portfolios uploaded onto our ePortfolio website and Pablo will give you, uh, send everyone the link. Um, that site, that page where the ePortfolios will be, will be um, going live as soon as the presentation is over. So if anybody wants to see the presentations that some of the, some of the times that students have worked on, um, those portfolios will be available for you a little bit later on. Yep. And uh, actually, let me just share that very quickly. Uh, all of these portfolios are will be available on the address that you see up on the screen. Uh, and we're going to share the recording of this session as well as this link so that you are able to access all of these portfolios and um, and, and then look at the content uh, and obviously contact the, the students should you have any additional questions. Um, are there any more questions, um, Thomas? No, I just think it's a little, there are just a ton of comments for everybody, very positive comments for everyone. But yeah. Thank you so very much to, first of all, our presenters. Uh, you have done outstanding work. We wanna thank you for your patience, for your time, for your presentations, for preparing for this especially during a very difficult time. We wanna thank your professors as well because they are the ones behind all of this work. Uh, we wanna highlight all of the excellent work that you, have, you all have done. And we also wanna thank our uh, colleagues from LaGuardia and students and faculty and, and also colleagues from, um, from outside LaGuardia, uh, from the education, from other CUNY colleges. We wanna thank you all for taking the time to join us in this student showcase. It's the second time we've done this virtually given the current circumstances i think it turned out to be even a better idea because we're able to welcome way more people than we used to when we did this face to face so we want to thank you for your time thanks to marwa and thomas and the rest of the e-portfolio team jimmy Derek, fifi mutas for their excellent work in the e-portfolio program in laguardia 
and thank you again for attending. Uh, you will receive an email with all of these resources uh, soon later this week, uh, and then just get in touch with us if you have any more questions. Thank everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.